This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer Online from St. Peter's Ipsley this Thursday morning. My name is Peter McLaren and I'll be leading Morning Prayer this week. This week we're going to look at the five shortest books of the Bible, all books that contain only one chapter. On Monday, we looked at Obadiah, the only Old Testament one-chapter book. Then we considered Philemon, and today we're looking at the third letter of John, having looked at the second letter yesterday. And I'm using this week the order of service from Common Worship Morning Prayer from the Book of Prayer, the Book of Common Prayer but I shall try to modernise the language where possible. Our canticle, however, will be from the old book of common prayer. So we begin with a seasonal sentence. From the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name is great among the nations. And in every place incense is offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord. So, dear Christian friends, the scripture moves us in various places that we should acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble or cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same through his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we are all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet or we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Therefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O oh God, which confess their fault. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to your promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. So grant to your faith, grant we beseech you, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amém. Now, for our canticle this morning, we're going to use a very old canticle of praise that seldom, if ever, used today. In fact, I don't think I've said it in a service for over 50 years. It calls on all created beings to worship God, and it's called the Benedicity. And it even asks Daniel's three friends, according to their Hebrew names, to worship God. It has 32 verses in it, with the same chorus after each verse, so you should be readily able to join in with the chorus. And again, I'll try and modernise the language slightly. The Benedicite. For all you works of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O heavens, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O waters above the firmament, Bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, all you powers of the Lord, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, sun and moon, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, stars of heaven, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, showers and dew, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, winds of God, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, fire and heat, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, summer and winter, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, dews and frosts, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, frost and cold, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, ice and snow, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, nights and days, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, light and darkness, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, lightnings and clouds, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, let the earth, Bless the Lord, yea, let it praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you mountains and hills, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, all you green things upon the earth, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you wells, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you seas and floods, praise the, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you whales and all that move in the waters, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, all you fowls of the air, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you beasts and cattle, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, let Israel bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you children of men, bless the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O oh, you priests of the Lord, Bless the Lord. 
praise him and magnify him forever. O you servants of the Lord, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O you spirits and souls of the righteous, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O you holy and humble men of heart, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O Ananias, Arazias and Misael, bless the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. So our third letter of John. It's a short letter from John to another church leader, and it gives another angle, a different angle, on church travelling ministers. Again, the letter conveniently divides up into five sections, which we'll look at briefly. And there are three particular names mentioned. There's a re greeting and rejoicing with Gaius, verses 1 to 4. And praise for Gaius' support for travelling Christian workers, verses 5 to 8. There's concern about a bossy leader. Diotrephes, verses 9 and 10. There's Demetrius mentioned, a good chap, verses 11 and 12. And then at the end, final greetings. So let's have our reading of 3 John, verses 1 to 4. Greetings. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health, as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoiced greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear my children are walking in the truth. Doesn't this sound very similar to 2 John as the greeting in many ways? In both letters, the emphasis is on truth. In both these introductions, the word truth occurs four times. And the original word occurs 110 times in the New Testament and applies not just to true speaking, but includes the idea of truth in the moral sphere, and divine truth revealed to mankind. You see, truth is important, not just in itself, but also in aspects of life where lies are being propounded. This was true in John's day, when some church members were being swayed away from the truth. I fear that it is also true in our day, particularly among some Christians in North America. But there's also a difference in the two greetings. To John was addressed, we believe, to a specific church. Three John is clearly addressed to an individual, Gaius. We know nothing more about him though there are three other people in the New Testament called Gaius. We read about them in Acts, Romans and 1 Corinthians. We do not know if this Gaius was one of them. Thought. 
This passage is also important to me because I regularly get at Christmas a calendar from a lawyer in Hong Kong. And it almost always includes this part of verse 2. I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. I'm sure many of us say a version of those words with, our, with and for our friends. So we'll look at verses 5 to 8. Beloved, it's a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers and sisters, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God, for they've gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these, that we may be fellow workers for the truth. John is describing a missionary situation here. Preachers and teachers who are traveling around in Christ's name. And so in supporting them, the church members were fellow workers in the gospel. You know, Christian ministry has got to be supported totally by Christians. We don't expect those who are not Christians to support this. But we ought as John says, to support people in Christian ministry. Thought, how do you and your church support wider Christian ministry? It could be by supporting a local lay, a local initiative like Youth for Christ, or some wider Christian care like Tear Fund or specific Christian care for older people, like Pilgrim Homes? Now that is a question we should address personally and corporately. Now we come to the difficult bit, verses 9 and 10. John says, I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge my authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he's doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. I'm not content with that. He refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to, who want to and puts them out of the church. Hmm. Really, there was at least a fourth letter from John to the local church about a bossy church leader who didn't want any visiting preachers, especially those who needed overnight accommodation. Diotrephes, who chaired the parish council, made sure those who suggested that this uh, suggested this parish mission with outside leaders were not selected for the next council. Mm. You know, when I was at a Christian group meeting recently, not a parish meeting, I note, I suggested we have some spiritual discussion where we could learn from each other's experience. That idea was promptly shut down, as we should only discuss administrative matters, not matters of wider mission. Clearly, Diotrephes is still around today. Is he active in your church? 
verses 11 to 12. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius, who has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself, we also had our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. Ah, there was one special church member, Demetrius. Indeed, we know nothing really more about him than this. Who in the ups and downs stood by the truth? Note that word truth coming again. John seems to be saying to Gaius, imitate Demetrius, not Diotrephes. And a thought for us today, which Christian leader should you and I be imitating? And which should you not? be imitating. Our final verses. John says, I had much to write to you, but I'd rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon. And we will talk face to face. Shalom, peace be with you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends each by name. Final greetings. You know, there's so much of the truth we could talk about that a letter will not suffice. I hope we can have a face-to-face -face catch up shortly when we can exchange greetings from all our Christian group to your Christian group. Thought. So may it be in our churches today. Amen. Our prayers. In the Book of Common Prayer, the service leaders and the congregations are specifically instructed in the prayers to speak them with a loud voice. So when we come to the Lord's Prayer, Make sure you can say it so that everybody in your house can hear. So, our prayers for today. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Now we'll say together the Lord's Prayer. Please say it in the old or new version, whichever is appropriate for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, save the King and mercifully hear us when we call upon you. Endue your ministers with righteousness and make your chosen people joyful. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is no other that fighteth for us 
but only you, O oh God. O oh God, make clean our hearts within us and take not your Holy Spirit from us. And the special prayer for this week. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect for Grace, known sometimes as the Morning Collect. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your government to do all ways that is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today on you, and your group of Christian people, your church and your family, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. So may God's blessing be upon you today. And we pray we might meet again tomorrow to look at the last one chapter book, that is Titus. No, it isn't. Oh, I'd better check. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.